transit came to Vermont slowly. The Winooski and Burlington Horse Railroad Company did not begin service until November 17, 1885. By the mid-80s, when Burlington's first horse cars trundled along Church, Main, and Pearl Streets and up North Winooski Avenue, horse car technology was at its zenith. In 1893, the system was electrified and three years later the company changed its name to Burlington Traction Company. By 1900, the impact of more sophisticated public transportation on Burlington was easier to see. The electrified routes had been extended greatly, Winooski could be reached via North Winooski and Riverside Avenue or Colchester Avenue, on North Avenue the line would soon be extended to Ethan Allen Park, four miles from City Hall and well into undeveloped territory. By 1910 the novelty of public transit had worn off. The city would begin to change again in response to the automobile. In 1915, automobile registrations in America were 2,309,666. By 1929, they would be 23,121,589. By this time, the shift to cars had driven Burlington streetcar system to a spectacular end of the line. It was given its goodbye in a fiery ceremony at City Hall Park. The property in North Winooski was occupied from 1871 to 1929 by the trolley company during which time the city of Burlington was shaped in significant ways by its trolley system. The takeover by Burlington Rapid Transit in 1929, to a large extent, simply replaced the service provided by the streetcar company with buses. The bus company was attractive to riders because it was more flexible than the track system of the trolleys, but the automobile was already taking over before World War II. As the Burlington suburbs grew, it became increasingly difficult to provide efficient service and by 1972, local service was no longer provided by Burlington Rapid Transit. for the, the bus company is trolley can only go as far as the tracks. Yeah. Bus can go just about any place. This here is an old paper from the Burlington Traction Company dated 1919, September 4th. And I believe what they were asking for were other pins for the conductors. There's very little known about the Burlington Traction Company. What little bits and pieces that we have, I've scrounged them. This is the first BRT patch. Uh -huh. That's when we came from Burlington Rapid Transit, and then after that, it was Vermont Transit. Okay. These here oh, are BRT tokens. Yeah, those look familiar. Hmm. This is my pride and joy right here. That's a oh. Burlington Traction Company employee button. I've heard, and again, a lot of it is hearsay, but a few of our, or the old trolleys, are in New Orleans. They, they're running them down there now. Huh. It would have been so wonderful if they kept the one that they burned down yeah. on St. Paul Street. All of this was open. This wasn't here at all. That step there, if you were to step out of there, you fell all the way down because there was nothing in here. There was, the building was like a U-shape in here. On the average, we used to keep them 12 years. And when I first started, they could they, I can't remember what they paid for them because I don't remember the numbers, but they could turn around after 12 years selling for the same price they bought them. Yeah. We used to have uh, a man come from Montana and buy buses from us here and drive them all the way back to Montana. <laughs> what a great job! That's right. <laughs> Every step. Wow. Every step. Wow. You don't get to stand next to a bus this close very often. <laughs> There's so, it's, it's like a dinosaur, it's huge. Relatively our new ones, the size of the engine here. Uh, power too, power's come a long way from back in the 40s. There was times that they had to put, have people get out and help push to get the buses up over the hill because they were so underpowered. I think the, the drivers were really heroes that headed out on those trips for Springfield, Mass, and places like this. They told me there was nothing more there than a pasture with a, a dirt road going through it. If you got stuck, you went and found the farmer and he brought his team of horses and hooked on you and pulled you out through. 
Many of the drivers carried their own coveralls. If the bus broke down, it was their responsibility. They tried to get it, fix it themselves. They'd crawl under them, change the spark plugs, because back then they had gasoline engines. And they'd get wet, and they'd start to skip. They'd stop, and they'd have to crawl out there in the mud and the water or whatever. So they were, they were had to be mechanically inclined, too. And back in the, uh, the trolley days, they, a lot of these, these doorways had doors. That's and what it's, Charlie it's my, was Right, and it's my understanding that the bay that we're standing in right now used to have dirt floor. Yeah. And you see how it's lit now. Can you imagine back then the lighting that they had, you know? Round light bulbs. They didn't have much lighting in here to work. That, that was really a hardship. When I came in here, I started cleaning floors. That's how I started, was cleaning floors. And I was very interested in everything. So whenever I saw someone needed some help, I dropped my broom and I'd ask the boss if I could give him a hand. And I worked my way up the whole ladder to the absolute top, which at that time was engine building. At one time, we were known all over the United States. This was the best bus company there was, uh, along with Greyhound. And Greyhound and Vermont Transit worked hand in hand. And it was the only bus companies that ever swapped buses back and forth. They always liked driving our buses. They always commented on how great our buses were. And, you know, they were really kept up nice. <clears throat> and we still try. We still try for excellence. And at one time, the shop had about uh, probably 35 people working in it. And it was like two, uh, two mechanics to a bus. People have their own cars now. There's so many. The freedom of the highway with the new cars and the young people as well. I mean, they, they have their own cars at a very, very young age. Where back then you didn't have a car very often. You, know, you either walked or you took the public transportation. This odd board up here was our overtime. If we wanted to work overtime, we'd move our peg over. And when I first came here, you had you started at the bottom. You started at, at either as a cleaner or you helped service buses which was wash them and sweep them and things like this. And you worked your way up and it took 10 years. As a rule, you had to be here 10 years before you could go out on the road all by yourself. That brought on what they call a green peg. If you had a green peg, you were on the top. Black peg, you were almost there. You could do some mechanical work and you could go along and help someone with a green peg out on the road. Over the years, that's kind of like we don't use it anymore. <laughs> this big tank here was, we used to be able to put our whole engines in them, in the engine blocks. And you cook them, literally. It was so hot in here in the summertime. And a lot of chemicals, a lot of chemicals were used. And we've absorbed a lot of the chemicals over the years. Along with the kidding around, a lot of hard work too. A lot of hard work. Now this place would be so thick with smoke that you you have to go outside and get a breath of air. When you open the door, it looked like it was on fire. And as the years went by, over the years, they got more efficient and better, and you know, they had to start building them more for non-polluting. This is a drum lathe. We use this all the time. Uh, the drums get wore from breaks, and all the the, the uh, drums are open on the back side. So when we check the breaks, we can physically feel them, move them, and see them. This press is, I don't know how old it is, but it, it will literally, they bent it under its own power. As for, for straightening out things or, and it will, and we have had it up to six ton. That will push six ton right here. This here used to be a dumb waiter. They'd send parts up from the parts room, and the guys would walk, there wasn't just walking up and down the stairs constantly. I don't know why they did away with it. Maybe because the guys were fooling around it, and riding it, riding it, or something, I don't know. <laughs> down in the dungeon. We used to keep parts and things down here, old parts. Uh, we were really good at uh, pack ratting stuff away. You know, keeping it for a rainy day. And then uh, 
we were told to get rid of everything. We had old engine parts and if if you couldn't get a brand new one right away, we had an old one that would work for a while, you know what I'm saying? To get you through. But again, certain people said, well, get rid of all of this junk. You want something new, you order something brand new. This is what we used to call bird bath. And we used to wash our hands in this until it broke down. It just gave up, wouldn't work anymore. I was told at one time the trolley, that's where they house the trolley parts. Watch your step. Before this garage was ever here, all the way down to this building, there used to be like houses and buildings all the way up within almost touching the upstairs building on both sides. There's one just above there. Now see this was the outside of the building. And they plug the windows up. So you're standing on the outside. This used to be all grass out here. This was the flower garden. The flower garden was like in the center. And my grandfather, he was a custodian here many, many years ago when I was a little, just a little guy. And he brought me in here and I remember sitting in the bus seat and blowing the horn and driving the mechanics nuts. And he took me over to where I told you the uh, trolley, they used to have trolley parts. Well, they made it into, they had two pool rooms. So, and they, they used to play pool. And I can remember looking over the top and my grandfather picking me up and giving me a pool cue, cue so I could hit the ball. And I don't know, after that I thought of a lot of it. You know, the stories that he told me about it. And I said, what am I gonna do? Where am I gonna go for a job? When I get out of the service, I came straight here. And Got hired. my grandfather said it was a wonderful place to work because it was a family owned business. And many of the other fellows that work here, their dads uh, were drivers. Mm -hmm. Many of them. Over here, watch the hole. There's a bakery right out back here. Matter of fact, I, I, I almost one night thought I was going to go through it because the, the city buses never really got a lot of mileage. It was just around town. So the tires never wore out. So when you had to take them off, you couldn't get the nuts off. Okay. Second, if you could get the nuts off, you couldn't get the wheel off. So back then, of course it probably was an unsafe move, but we weren't going very far. We loosened them up a little bit, go around the block, up over the sidewalk, try and break them loose. <laughs> and I came back in one night, coming down through, up, up above, and we had the doors open. And I come down through and I put the brakes on, and nothing. And I hit the brakes again, and nothing. And there's a wall sticking out up there, probably about two feet. It comes down and it's L-shaped. And the bakery was just this side of it. I said, oh, please stop. <laughs> and I put it in reverse. It was automatic. And I floorboarded it and nothing happened. So when I got almost to the wall, I jumped behind the seat. Okay, and the fellow upstairs heard the crash. He doesn't work here anymore, but he was laughing. It, the windshield wiper came off. It caved the whole front of it in. Oh, what a mess. And I hadn't been here very long. I said, well, it goes to the oh, job. your job. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I put it on the pit and the fellow just laughed. He just roared. I said, don't laugh. The boss is coming in in the morning. And uh, he was a good boss. He was very, he was strict. And he was in the Navy and he had Navy ways about him, you know. This is the way you do it. And everyone was lining up in the morning to see what I was going to get, you know. They're going, oh boy, this is going to be good. And I said, I gave his name, I called out his name, and I says, I rearranged one of your buses last night. And he says, you did? I says, yes, I did. He, was, he had his back to me, and the bus was right behind him. I said, it's right behind you. And he turned around, looked at it, turned back, said, did you fill out an accident report? He said, fill out an accident report. And that's all that happened. Everyone's jaw just dropped <laughs> because they expected some excitement, and it didn't happen. That is when you come off the pit for the bus, you turn there. Okay, because, right. When you, when you start turning here, it means your rear wheels are just coming across this edge of the pit. Anytime before, and your wheels go down. And you may be stuck there. You ever done it? 
Not down here, but I have upstairs. I came in one night rolling it right up through and I wheeled in there and I was young, you know, and I'm a good driver and I, I was just, oh, oh, it was too, I knew it was too sharp. But all I did was hope and I heard this cup bang! And the bus was still moving and I heard another cup bang! The big drive tires went in, came back out. The other one dropped down and came back out. Wow. That was so close. <laughs> but we have had guys put him in and get up get underneath and put the blocks up the wood and jack them. And it, was, it was quite a thing to get them moved. And the kids over here used to get rowdy and I had one throw his mother's jar of jam through there one night. It was a full jar of jam. He went in, took it off the shelf. Just missed me. Smashed the window. I called the police and I said, you know, you need to come over here. One of the kids just smashed one of our windows. Well, where is he? I said, he's across the street up the tree. And the policeman come over and he went over and he says, come on down. He said, nope. Just come on down. Nope. What could the policeman do? He couldn't get him down so finally he tired of it and he left. But the, a lot of the kids, we've seen a lot of kids grow up here. And they've hit us with water balloons and we've, we've got them with the grease guns. And, oh yeah, it, it was a game. This whole wall has had a lot of banging and so when do they have it knocked it down. As you can see the bricks have been chipped away and pulled out while they were waiting for buses. People stand here and they dig around the cement and a little bit here and a little bit there before you know it, out come a brick. I had a picture of, the, of one of the trolleys uh, from this door and I can't find it, I don't know where it is, but it showed two men standing out front. And this hole wasn't here, you gotta remember this was all solid. But they had a ramp, it was made out of cement probably on both sides where they had the track come up and they drove the trolley up on the top so they could work under it. Now I don't know if they greased them down here or what they did down here. I'm sure it was brutal work because back then everything was done with a wrench. Didn't have the air tools we have today. More holes. Oh. Right around here is our archives. <laughs> this is where we stood when it was warm and, and we put our names. There's a lot of names etched in here, different years. Around here, I'm over here. There's Joe again. Joe All right. Who else is there? There's John Ducharme. John Ducharme, he started in 613 of 42. Right, and I'm here, right there. Actually, this one will go back out. It's a very, very, very interesting book. They couldn't have, couldn't have asked for a nicer gift yeah. from the company. It has all the schedules. This was from the World's Fair. Oh, that was up in Montreal. I enjoyed looking through it because I was looking around trying to figure out where the places were. Now see, this here, this is the bar, this, this is here. The park this yeah. way inside was all the way down through. That's the outside. Out here, where the park is, well, we're actually where this used to be. Um, See, they had them backed in. You know where French Hill is? Yeah. Between Wilson and Richmond? That's, that's, that's the old French Hill. That's pre-89? Mm-hmm. There you go. See what I told you about the windows upstairs? Oh, yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And of course, they had to take them out because the buses got higher. It's coming into the barn, but I don't know for which angle. Because he's the tracks either goes one way or the other. See the buildings that used to be up to? Mm -hmm. And this is a this is a trolley barn. There are used to be places where you saw the telephone poles. They were closer. You know, I assume for the power, you know, coming in. All the town fathers were there when they when they burned it. It's a bizarre thing. It was a very bizarre <laughs> thing to do that. Uh -huh. So that, that had to been very hard on the on the folks that had worked the trolleys, their family, to, to see that happen. You know, well, why is why? And they did have a hard when 
when the buses came along and the trolleys were still there, they were uh, incidences supposedly that the trolleys rammed the buses and things like this. I mean, you know, it happens. <laughs> I probably would have been upset too. Yeah. They probably figured they were all going to lose their jobs. Yeah. So. Well, I don't on know that how much note. more I can tell you. <laughs>